That's it. So. Well, good morning. My name is Alan Richardson. I'm the managing broker here at Maximum One Realty and Realty Partners. My name is Ming Richardson. I'm the compliance broker for Maximum One Realty and Realtor Partners. And this is our uh, weekly real estate backstory. We kind of talk about the comings, the goings, everything happening in the real estate world and uh, and how it kind of applies to us. So um, we kind of want to jump in today and and, uh, and start sharing some some you know useful information, but but we really want to start by talking about the differences in real estate. Uh, there's this old saying in real estate that real estate is is always about local. Real estate is local. It is. And and now more than ever, we're seeing where where that is proving to be so absolutely true. And so you know what we're sharing here with you is that you know like like the 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 range from where one market is to where another market is depends on where it is. And so that gap is actually really, really huge. You can even see this is the home price price, price gap uh, for the past 13 years. And you can see that, you know, there's been times when prices are really high and times when prices were really low. But even during that, there, there you know, you can see what that spread is in that gap. And we're seeing that in our market right now, there's a pretty significant uh, difference from what how far up one market is versus another market. And so like, like, like what you'll see, if I can get my is where San Francisco, you have negative 10.1 and Miami actually has a growth of 10.9, which is, you know, if you look at the gap is actually 21%. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, there's a 20% gap between how high one market is and how low one market is. And so we say that because a lot of times, you know, especially like like national news. And sometimes the news that we follow, they'll just be quoting one particular area or they're going to take an average. And you know what? The average is pretty all over the place. It depends on on what you're using to, to, you know, or, or, you know, is it is it the mean or is it the median when you start talking about averages and things like that? And so like like for us here in the Atlanta market, you can see that Actually, Atlanta is one of the top markets in the United States as far as home price growth year over year. We're still running about six and a half percent. And, you know, we're not as hot as Miami or Tampa are. But, you know, being here in the Sun Belt, you'll see that, you know, a lot of a lot of the the, the, the cities that, that are doing really well are, are in the Sun Belt here in the South. Uh, and so we have a lot of positive things going for us. Well, one thing we really want to stress to you is that even though you might see that California might be down, does that mean that Georgia's down? You know, we're always having to fight misinformation in our marketplace where folks are like, oh, well, you know, I heard so and so that the market's crashing. And, you know, of that 6% that, that we're seeing, we're going to see some months that are flat. We may even see a month or two that, that show a negative property value growth for one month. We're still running about 6.5% year, year to date kind of thing. And that's, and honestly, we even need, I hope we cool off just a little bit more. You know, it sounds weird. The average is only about four and a half percent is what most real estate uh, values Here increase. Atlanta, right. And so we can be at that rate. And so I'm not at all like, like, like we're in a really good place. And for our consumers, for, for our clients, when they say, how's the market doing? They don't want to know about transactions and like, like my, if your sales volume is down, they want to know. Is my house worth less than it was last week, last year, that kind of thing? That's where it really is going to. They're have looking at longevity and make sure that their house is not depreciating or they're not buying at the height of the market. Yep. Now, um, another interesting fact came out in that, that right now we have a record number of home buyers that are looking in new metro areas. We, we've already seen where like, like, like the new data has been coming out mm -hmm. showing that Americans are moving farther than we've ever moved. And and so we're, you know like, like like there's been a big shift into rural small towns, but we're also seeing where people are moving completely different towns. You know, and and Atlanta is is one of those really great destinations where we have a we have a positive net inflow of people moving into Georgia and into Atlanta. What we really want to stress here with this is, do you have good referral partners? Because referral business is a really great place to to, to be prepared to take advantage What's funny, of funny, right one of my agents called me this past week, and she said that she got a referral from Tom Ferry that, that she attends. She's a member on Tom Ferry. And uh, anyway, make the long story short, the reason why she even got that referral is the first agent that the agent called when I answered her phone. 
So Letty, my agent, answered her phone and had a listing appointment this week, and it was listed for seven hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. So pick up the phone, y'all. Yeah, that's the other piece here. So, but that being said, please set up referral networks. Reach out to other agents. Network with other agents. We have so many folks moving from other areas. That this is a great place for us to pick up great business. Absolutely. As well. Now, mortgage rates, they ticked up a little bit more. We're really looking at mortgage rates, really starting to respond respond positively next week. Uh, the rates came out Wednesday of last week, and everyone was still up in arrears about the, On the, debt, uh, the debt ceiling. And, and, debt uh, ceiling. and so now, you know, we have a potential deal, supposedly. They're trying to work everything out, but, but you know, they've agreed in principle. So the markets are responding in a very positive way, and we should start seeing the rates moving back in the, in the right direction. But, you know, we just need to move on past that thing right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Uh, on the positive side, also, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, anytime he opens his mouth, the market's just kind of like, <laughs> kind of thing. And so he's, he's like, look, he says, rates may not have to rise as much as, as, as they, they have in the past. They expect to curve the inflation that they projected. And so, I think the economy's already feeling the inflation. Um, the impacts of, yeah. yeah. And so we have seen the economy, not necessarily slowing, slowing, but definitely, you know, like, 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 and and I do think that the, you know, the Fed has kind of been throwing a little bit of cold water on, on the on the fire mm -hmm. that, that has been the the economy and how well it's been burning, uh, but and the, and that's really the trick. Can we slow it down enough without pushing it into recession? And so at the same time, you know, we saw that, uh, you know, in a very positive way, mortgage delinquency rates in the United States hit an all time low in March. Never have we had them this low. Well, ever. I think partially because during the debt, um, during the low interest rate period, a lot of folks refinance their loan, and you know they know they're not going to get a better price than what they have. Well, and even folks that, that were in that were having challenges in that point, you could refi. You could. You, there were so many opportunities and so many programs going on, and so when people say, "Hey, we're not seeing," hey, can I get a list of foreclosures? Can I get a list of bank owned properties? Look, mortgage delinquency rates are at its lowest ever. All right. All right. And so if, if we aren't defaulting on loans, guess what's not coming up? REOs, bank-owned properties, that kind of stuff, HUD homes. I and, think and there's only four HUD homes in the state of Georgia. Well, right now. a couple of weeks when we checked that. Yeah. But, you know, we are expecting a little bit foreclosure, but not in a mass or percentage of people think back in 2008, 2009, yeah. uh, through 2021, uh, 2011. But there has been a lot of talk here lately on, on the other side, uh, you know, are we going into a recession? And so will it be a, a, an easy one? Will it be a deep one? That kind of stuff. And so there, there's a couple of big factors right now that's kind of going into that. And one is that like the conference board, and I'll show you a stat from them, uh, you know, and, and so they're looking at, at, at you know, the, the tide is right. Fannie Mae is, um, who's definitely tied right. into the home values. They're, they're much more pessimistic. They're expecting... GDP to begin contracting now, um, and the you know the Philadelphia Fed survey is looking at uh, you know that kind of going in. When you kind of look at all the economic data, as far as like right now we have an inverted yield curve, which is you know financial uh, talk for uh, the the short term um, treasuries are have a higher value than than the longer term treasuries, and so that's kind of a red flag. Uh, you know, we have a lot of leading economic indicators that look like we're heading that way. Uh, you know, supply of credit is contracting, commodity prices are falling, like all these kind of things are, 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 are pointing towards a recession. And we're not as worried about a recession because housing has already had its recession, right? And if you look at, at like, this is, um, you know, the leading economic index, it's called the LEI. And so the conference board puts this out. Every time the LEI moves into uh, underneath basically the red line, we're in a recession. And so we kind of see that going on. But what we don't want you to feel is that a recession means that home values drop. A recession means that prices, like, we're not going to see prices drop. We, we have way too much uh, positive things happening in housing. And, and residential real estate is tied up in, into supply versus demand. And now, so I'll show you in just a minute, we got way more demand than we have supply for. Still. And so even though I said all that, Zillow just released their new Zillow forecast for the remainder of 2023. 
and Zillow is forecasting that home values will grow nationwide by 3.9%. And this is nationwide, so and, it's not local. Yeah, and this is not, but you know, the the and and so when when we say that you know Georgia's at six and a half percent, you know, like like that's that's very very doable. And and I'm not, I know there's a lot of folks who just want to poo poo everything that Zillow has to say, but when it comes to real estate data, you're hard pressed to find a company that that deals more in real estate data than Zillow does. And so, kind of core logic. Well, I mean, some of the you know definitely some of the MLS aggregators and that kind of stuff, but. That being said, Zillow is still a, a pretty significant data player in our marketplace. And so when they're looking at, they just revised their 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 home values up this year by 3.9%. And, and I do think that that's pretty close to where we're kind of looking at. Yep. Uh, and so like at the same time, our pending sales index is starting to trend up a little bit more. You can see where pending sales is starting to, you know, it's been flat and it's been up and down, but you can see that we're starting to trend in a very positive way which we are so thankful for starting to see Absolutely. that moving uh, moving ahead. Uh, you know, one of our biggest challenges, though, is that new listings of homes are down 24%. Right? Like we are down really significantly from where we've been on just total new, total number. And I think a lot of people are holding on to their real estate simply because they got such a real great real uh, interest rate. And not only that, if it's like a home, I mean, they can't really replace it with another one with the current rate yeah so and then at the same time our total active listings now is actually under last year so not just new listings are down total active listings are down and we're under not just last year we are down above all well i mean like, like well you want to see where we've been at this is this is our total existing for sale inventory for the last six, seven years kind of thing. And and while I don't encourage you to do anything, but as far as your buyer goes, if you do have a property under contract, when you go do the inspection, make sure those items are non-negotiable items before you back out. Because anything material or a personal preference, you know, they may not find another property of the same value um, that wasn't better or equal to the one that you're currently under contract with. Right, and, and you know, like, like if you look at, at where our inventory level was, um, you know, like, like back in 2017, we had like 1.9 million homes for sale and we got under a million right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like, like our total inventory homes. So what Ming was, was really high, you know, talking about there is like, you know, uh, right now, sometimes our, and, and, and we're and moving into a balanced easy. market. Right. We, we are moving into a more balanced market. But that being said, if the buyers get real big britches right now. And they may not find yeah. another home equivalent to what they currently are under contract for. Yeah. So, you know, just make sure you have that consultation with your buyer, because as an agent, you know what inventory is out there and who's willing to negotiate and who is not willing to negotiate at all. Well, and but we're also, and I'll show you a slide in a minute, we are seeing where sellers are giving more in concession. So we're moving into a more balanced market. But that being said, it's not a buyer's market. It's still a little bit of a seller's market, but it's moving into a much more balanced territory here. Uh, overall, our pending sales are still down 17%. This is on a national basis, mm -hmm. but we're about the same here in Georgia. Just the, the total volume of sales is still down under last year. Um, but that being said, a third of those are in a contract within two weeks. For the one that are pricing correctly, you are under contract within two weeks. Yeah. And then of those that go under contract, a third of those are selling above list price. We're still seeing homes, like, like well-priced, good condition mm -hmm. homes are still selling selling above quickly. List and price. Exactly. So, you know, if you can just talk to your seller and let them know, if we list at the the highest, even though your home is small square footage, you're probably not going to get any traction just because buyer are more conscientious about their money more than ever now than they were during the height of the market. Setting that price from the very beginning and you know properly is so crucial. It makes a difference. Well, because right now this is this is really where we're at. This the share of home sellers providing concessions is almost at a record high. This year, you know, so far this year, and it's trending down, which is kind of normal, but like like we're at some of the highest percentages of sellers offering concessions that we've ever had. And that's because we had a lot of sellers who just like 
well, we want to try this price. We want to try this price. And so what ends up happening, they end up having to give concessions. Now, the number one concession is price. But a lot of times, one thing that our sellers won't put into, my, in, into their mind is that it's not just price, right? And when you come out of the market and you're overpriced, it, now you don't just have to reduce price, but now you've got to go in and and you you have to repair. Now you have to address we repairs. A more repair issue, appraisal require repair, yeah. not inspection um, report, but appraisal require repair. So you guys, you know, make sure if you're gonna sell as is, you know, the type of loan you obtain matters. So well, but you know. The thing is, is that what we see is that homes sit on the market. The longer that they sit on the market, we have to take a price reduction. Then we have to offer closing costs. And then we have to do home repairs. And then we have to do uh, closing costs. And, and, and you know, like, like all these things start adding up. And, and honestly, everything of that comes off the bottom line, the net to the seller. And so, whereas if you come out of the gate at the right price, guess what you don't normally have to deal with? You don't have to reduce and sell price. Guess what? Because it's going to appraise. Yeah. And two, you know, the buyer knows again a great deal. And so therefore, the only thing they will ask you are what I consider non-negotiable, meaning a loan requirement product that needs to be re, re uh to come be repaired in order to have that product uh the loan approved. Now, um changing gears again, uh, what is the future of home snap? So home snap is a home search app and and uh uh the bottom line is, is that HomeSnap got purchased when Homes.com got purchased. Uh, CoStar bought both of them. And so there's been a lot of talk about what's happening with HomeSnap. And so CoStar kind of came out and said, listen, we're not looking to monetize HomeSnap at all. They are going to be making it part of Homes.com more like, like tied into it on there or referrals, uh, that kind of thing. But what they're not doing is, is they're not like, like you're still the only agent listed in there. If, if you're going to use the home snap app, that kind of stuff, they are not monetizing home snap, but they are going to be changing its name some. And so you are going to be seeing some, some additional things kind of going on. And so it's going to be tied in with the homes.com environment. And it's going to be part of uh called Homes Pro. And so it's going to be Homes Pro and that's kind of where it's going. So no real changes that much except for some name and some branding. And then, the, and, you know, we always take this with a little bit of grain of salt. They say they're not monetizing it. We all never know. know. Because once they get you into a system uh, that you're really comfortable in operating, you're actually getting leads from it. Well, they got to at somewhat break even if not monetized. Well, but the big like deal here is that else. CoStar is trying, you know, the only company that scares Zillow is, is, CoStar. is CoStar. And the, and CoStar is trying to be a little bit different in the marketplace and they, they really are acting very differently. So we'll see what it works out long term, but right now it looks very positive. Um, building permits. So building permits have been kind of trending uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. And right now we are we're not at a really high construction level, but they they are better than our resales at the moment. And so I say that just because one thing that, that, that that's a new trend that we're really excited to see is you can see the percentage of new homes sold by price range. The builders have finally gotten the memo that price is the king and that they have to build a product that our buyers can't afford. And so you can see where there's been just a really massive shift yeah. here lately. And, and we know of several builders that, that, that went through six months, six, nine months ago, canceled all these land deals on homes that were going to be priced in the five, six, seven, yeah. that kind of stuff. And then went back. And so we see a lot of builders building more townhomes, more value properties, more starter homes, that kind of thing. And it's starting to show off. And so we're really glad we're to, really see that to see that because it's, because this is where our new and existing home sales are. And you can see that right now, new home sales are trending up. Mm -hmm. And that, and for us, like, like we just, we looked at earlier, inventory is not our friend. Like, like we just don't have enough homes. And so focusing on new construction can be a really good place for us to find some inventory right now. Um, you know, we still have enough of, of our resales coming on the market. Hopefully they do ease up a little bit more. And I think that once interest rates start coming down, we will start having more inventory on the market. 
But right now, you know, new homes is a place to look for. Unfortunately, it's probably short lived because we're seeing where the developers have pulled back on single family housing starts. When I say pull back, I mean like uh, they pulled the they, they basically ripped the rug out from underneath the builders on that one. And largely because the developers were developing all high end value lots. And that's not where the market's heading. And so where the builders are trying, you know, it all starts with those, those lot costs. And so you can't put a $200,000 home on, on a lot designed for a $700,000 house. Correct. So they're having to go back and get, get things rezoned and get them replanning and kind of going back. And so we're, like, like there's some new construction inventory right now. Jump on it while you can, because it's going to get tight in the new construction market moving forward. Right now, they're using up inventory that they built and that they created over the last year, year and a half. And that's going to dry yeah, up remember, fairly quickly. New here. construction on the average from development and permitting, it's going to be able to take about three years. So what's happening now is going to impact us for the next couple of years. Yeah, we need so, that. So just understand that for the next two and a half years or so, you may not have that new construction available. Now, this week, as far as training goes, uh, tomorrow we have Intro to Connect MLS. That's going to be over at our airport office. Yeah, please take that class. I know you may have taken it before, but I'm telling you, they're always coming up with new products, and it will save you so much time. As I tell my agent, know your craft, because the better you are operating, it's only three hours. I promise you that is well uh, better time for you. And then on Thursday, I'm teaching making money in real estate investing. If you want to be an investor, if you are an investor, or if you want to work with investors, Come this is down. the class for you. I'll be in the McDonough office teaching that live and in person. And just uh, uh, let you guys know always that if you all have any questions that, you know, that you would like to see us address mm -hmm. in backstory, please email us uh, or you can Make a comment based on our backstory uh, in Facebook, yeah. and we'll be more than happy to put that on next week. So thank you guys very much. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And, and I hope so, you have a great weekend. All right. Call, text, smoke signals. We'll answer anything. Bye. Thank you.